Matthew here from AnywhereGaming.com, bringing you another Beat Matt Bat Rep. WeWorks here to play. Mini War Gaming's Beat Matt Bat Rep. It's been a little while since we've done one of these. Actually, we've done Fantasy a couple times, but we haven't done a 40k one in probably three or four weeks. So thankfully, Matthew here, yes, his name is the same as mine. He's uh, come all the way down from Burlington to challenge me to a game of Warhammer 40k. This is gonna be his Grey Knights against my Tyranids, which is gonna to be tough, obviously, for me, because, well, it's Grey Knights. Yeah, Grey Knights, like, anti-Tyranids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at least I'm not demons. That's true. <laughs> uh, at least that. But anyways, I've decided to crack out my Tyranids again because I've been playing my Necrons a lot, and the Tyranids need some loving, too. And so we're actually trying out, I'm, I'm trying out a different list altogether, and we're trying out with a lot more terrain than we normally play. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy this game of Grey Knights versus Tyranids. Let's start by taking a look at my Tyranids. Now I am proxying a couple things in here because I'm trying out a, a little bit of a different list than what I normally bring in, and I'm probably gonna be buying the models for this pretty soon. This is a Tyranid Prime. He's actually gonna have a Lash Whip and a Bone Sword and Scything Talons. This is gonna be the Swarm Lord, which I'm gonna be getting and adding to my collection now that GW came out with a new kit. And these are gonna be two Tyranifexes, which I'm also going to be adding to the kit if they perform well enough. And so we got two Tyrant Effects, there's a Swarm Lord, and a Doom of Malantai and a Mycetic Spore. I actually wasn't going to bring this, but I didn't have enough Gene Stealers to fill out the rest of my army. I was going to have 60 Gene Stealers, but it turns out I only had 55. So I decided to only bring 52 Gene Stealers, one of them upgraded with a Brood Lord. And then with the extra points, I brought in a Doom of Malantai, just because, hey, I like the Doom of Malantai. So let's take a look at the other Matthew's army, his Grey Knight army. Now he's not proxying, he's doing a pretty good job of having everything just as it looks. And so I'm gonna get these backwards. One of these is a librarian, the other one is, I think that one is the chapter master or something, the Grand Master, I believe, and that is a librarian. And they have with them two groups of Terminators, and these Terminators have their force weapons, their or their thunder hammers and those halberds that give him plus two initiative basically a six initiative and he's got his dreadnought with two twin linked auto cannons and he's got his dread knight of course just with what it looks like it has so there's the, the big flamer thing and a cannon and everything else and then he's got a group of purifiers as well uh, lots of them with halberds or a, lot, a few of them with the thunder hammers as well or the there's they're called something else death hammers or something demon hammers i believe is what it is so with the board, like I said in my last battle report, we've been trying to work with more terrain. And so I decided, hey, I'm going to really fill out the table. But not so much that it's the Cities of Death kind of level, but more just that there's lots of blocked line of sight or really good cover. And so you can see that we decided to bring in these buildings. These are all made by Pegasus, and they were put together by Fireman Tim back in the day. Um, and this is actually for our big apocalypse board. Now, anything within the buildings or shooting through those windows, it's going to count as fortified terrain. That's what we decided beforehand, so it'll be a 3-plus cover save. Everything else will just be a normal 4-plus cover save. So we rolled off. He actually rolled higher and decided he wanted me to go first. I'm not sure if I agree with people letting other people go first, because I know the idea is that, well, if you're a shooting army, then they'll move up and you can shoot at them closer. But if you had taken first turn, then you could shoot at them, maybe you're not as effective, but it's, hey, it's a free round of shooting. Now, the one thing I do understand is if you're doing objectives, if you let your opponent go first, then when it's your turn, or the last turn, you're the one that gets to go last and try to grab those last objectives, so you have a bit of control there. And a kill, this is gonna be a kill point scenario. Uh, and we're actually, we decided to change the rules a little bit because I had 11 kill points in my army, he only has seven. So we decided that the the Mycetic Spore and the Doom of Malantai together were a kill point rather than separately kill points and that the Tyranid Prime would be a kill point with the squad that he's a part of. So he has to kill both the Prime and the squad in order to get a kill point. And so this will be nine kill points on my side and seven on his. So it's a little more even that way. Uh, it's just kill points doesn't make any sense when you have that much of a, a difference between how many there are. And so anyways, um, I guess it makes sense in the, in the sense of an objective game and a kill points game. I'm not sure if you want your opponent to, to go first. Uh, I guess it allows you to kind of pick off those last few models you need to at the end. But I think with the shooty army, you'd want to get the first turn in anyway, just to whittle down a close combat army. And my army is pretty much all close combat. The Tren effects are going to be pretty useless. I had anticipated a, a, me a mechanized Grey Knight's army. All I knew is that he was bringing Grey Knights. 
and so most of the Green Knight player that I've been against have been mechanized, so I thought the Tran effects would be a good um, long range support against that. But you can probably guess how useful they are against Terminators when they're sure they have their strength 10 rupture cannons and their strength 5 cluster spines. Uh, they do have the, I did upgrade or change the one Thorax weapon to the one that is it just wounds on a 2+, plus, but that's a flamer, so you have to be nice and close for that as well. So, yeah, the Tran effects probably won't perform very well. But hey, we got the Swarm Lord and a buttload of Gene Stealers. So he decides not even to try to steal initiative because he wanted me to go first, and so I just move up. And so the Tran effects get into position. I'm making sure to leave at least half my guys in cover so that anytime he fires at me, I will be in cover. The Swarm Lord is too big and fat to move into that building, so he's just going to try to go around it. And then the Gene Stealers are going to try for a nice surround where you're going to hit him on all flanks possible so that if he guns down one of the flanks, at least another few of the flanks can still get in. Here they're moving so far because we rolled their run at the same time because I would declare beforehand where they were going so I couldn't change it based on the run. And now these guys are doing their run in the shooting phase. And so they're getting, making sure they're getting behind those barrels so at least half of them are in cover. So five behind, five in front. Tran effects opens fire on the Dreadnought and gets two hits, but he gets a four plus cover save and he makes both of them. So no hits on that. The tra other Tran effects fires into the Purifier squad and he manages a hit with a strength 10 weapon and he gets a wound as well, but they get a three plus save and so they're just fine. It's only an AP4 weapon. I really wish it was AP3. You know, obviously it'd be great if it was AP1, but I can understand that. It doesn't, it's not a melta or anything, so it wouldn't completely make sense to make an AP1. So that's it for the Tyranids. No casualties on the Grey Knight side. On his turn, he just moves his Dread Knight over, and then he moves into his shooting phase. And he fires the cannon from the Dread Knight. It only scatters 1d6 because it's within 12 inches of that yellow bead, which is the servo skull or something. And he, and I can make a ton of my cover saves right there, as you can see. He fires through the 3 plus cover into my other gene stealers and i only fail one of the cover saves or sorry that wasn't to the swarm lord and he fails one of his armor saves at three plus and so he's just fine and he fires into the gene stealers who all get four plus cover and i make a ton of those only three of them go down and so that was a little above average i make sure to remove them in such a way that i still get cover against the next group the purifiers fire into these gene stealers who are in cover and he manages quite a few wounds but i do get a four plus cover save against that and with that, I actually make t a ton of those cover saves and only three of the Gene Stealers die. But that is, they are still going to have to do a, a panic test, a leadership test. Uh, because they are outside of Synapse and so they are not um, um, fearless. They, but they do have a good leadership of 10. He fires into the squad and manages to wound the Prime and kill a couple more of the Gene Stealers. Now we see if these guys are going to run a leadership test of 10 and they fail it. So they're going to run 8 inches back really sucks because that's obviously going to slow down my flanking maneuvers and really they should have made their leadership test so that was pretty bad luck on my end there end of round one as you can see already starting to get action-packed but not quite as action-packed as it's going to get once i get to him in close combat he's managed to gun down and make one of the gene stealer groups run hurt some of the other gene stealers wound the swarm lord but otherwise everything seems to be going okay so far so stay tuned for round two, click on the annotation if you're on YouTube, leave a comment below who you think is going to win based on what you've seen so far.